Welcome to my channel. This tutorial demonstrates how to take a 3D scan using a Creality Raptor 3D scanner and convert it to a custom avatar in Clo. This is an abbreviated version of a workshop previously offered for Patreon subscribers, where we explored applications of this technology on a range of body types and gender presentations. If you'd like to keep up to date with other projects and upcoming workshops, join my Patreon. Let's get started. Here is what a 3D scanned avatar looks like when imported into Clo. Taking a full 3D scan can be more labor intensive than other scanning methods, but it is the most useful for capturing period silhouettes and body shapes and sizes outside the standard ready to wear range. The equipment I use to take this scan includes the Creality Raptor Pro 3D scanner, a 14 inch MacBook Pro laptop and charger, a USB to USB-C adapter, extension cord, and a rolling cart. I also need to make sure I bring a measuring tape for taking key measurements to check later and two cardboard tubes about four and a half feet tall for propping arms in an A pose. Before taking the scan, I prepare a space with access to a power outlet, even lighting, and enough area to move all the way around the client. I ask the client to wear skin tight clothing that is matte and not shiny, style their hair off their neck, and stand with their arms propped in an A pose with legs shoulder width apart. If I am taking a scan of period undergarments, I will fit and dress the client in that instead. In Creality Scan, I create a new project as an ODP file with the following settings. I use infrared mode. For object, I choose body, feature, geometry, and I don't disable the flat base, though sometimes I do try it and I kind of go back and forth on that one. I then scan the client starting in the front at the chest level, then tilt side to side. I then pan down to pelvis level and tilt side to side. I pan down again to knee level and then as low to the floor as I can get. Here I pan side to side and then also up and down. Now I rotate above the shoulder for a top down view and pan down one arm and then the other and get the top of the head. This is my best chance to get the arms because getting them more than once often leads to duplicates. I try to get as much of the front and sides as I can before rotating around the back. I typically have to pause the recording and start again once I've walked around the arms. As I'm scanning, notice how my scanner tells me that I need to keep consistent distance from the scan. If the tracking gets lost, I return to an easy to identify location like the front or back chest until it recognizes where I'm at. If the scan messes up, I can pause and undo the mistake and then start again from an easy to identify location. I try to get a couple scans before feeling confident I have enough information. Then I clean the model in the scanning software before exporting. In the process tab, I click one click process. It is possible to merge more than one scan together, but I find it works better if I can get one good scan to work with and clean it up later. Click view mesh to delete any unwanted geometry at this stage. In the edit tab, I choose whole filling auto. First I have to preview and then confirm. For mesh smooth, I change it to four, preview and confirm. And for simplification, I choose one, preview and confirm. Then I hit export, save as, I choose the folder and I make sure to change the format to OBJ. Before importing the model to Clo, I have to optimize it in Blender. I start by going to file and then import wavefront OBJ. The model imports huge, so first I scale it to 0 0.001. Then I rotate and locate the model to be balanced on both legs and face front at ground center. Once that's done, it's very important that I use control A to apply all transforms. Then I can add the remesh modifier and change the voxel setting to 0 0.01 meters and check smooth shading. This will reduce the geometry of the model and make it much lighter for simulating in Clo and easier to edit while it's in Blender. If Voxel Remesh turns your model into a meteor shower like you see here, then you first need to fill the holes in the mesh. Go to Edit Mode, press A to select all, and F to fill. I then press Tab to enter Edit Mode, press L to select the main model, H to hide, A to select all of the remaining geometry, and X to delete the vertices. This will get rid of all the loose geometry and also make it easier to edit in Blender. Now I click the tab at the top to enter sculpt mode and use the smooth brush to smooth any drag lines or flaws in the scan. And I will use the inflate brush to fill in any missing geometry. If the crotch or arm's eyes are connected, then you can't really make an arm's eye or a crotch seam in Clo. 
So I go to edit mode, I turn on x-ray view, I select both halves of the model or just one half and H to hide. That will give me an opportunity to see the curve of the crotch seam and fix it in sculpt mode using the grab brush. I'll also adjust the arm size as needed. If the pose needs to be adjusted, that's very unfortunate, but it happens. I use the pose brush in sculpt mode. Now, if the limbs or head are really bad, I will sometimes mirror one side to the other if I have like a full hand on one side, for example, or I'll even replace the limbs with a Clo avatar limb altogether. I import the Clo avatar, delete what I don't need, I position the new limbs while in object mode, and then once everything looks good, I select both models and use Control J to join. At this point, if enough editing is made, then I have to reapply the remesh modifier. I also check one last time that there are no loose parts by pressing Tab to enter edit mode, L to select the main model, H to hide, A to select all the loose geometry, and X to delete the loose geometry. It's very important to now press Option H to make the model reappear so that it will appear in Clo. I just want to point out that all of this is an artistic and subjective process. You have to really understand human anatomy and also the specific anatomy of this particular client. So it's very important to refer to photo references while making these adjustments for the most accuracy. Now I'm ready to export by going to File and Export Wavefront OBJ. Finally, I can import the OBJ file to Clo. Go to the main menu bar, Avatar, Auto Convert to Avatar. I open the file, it reminds me that it needs to be an A pose. I select the OBJ. I choose the gender or the specific Clo avatar that needs to be assigned to this model. And I leave converting option at automatic. For avatar format, I choose rigging only because this will maintain the model exactly as I exported it from Blender. I then name the file, select the save location and click convert. I have to wait for Clo to figure out where all of the limbs and everything are so that it can assign rigging to this model. But once that's done, here she is. Because we chose rigging only, we are able to pose this avatar using any of the poses that are available to the particular gender of the avatar you assigned. I recommend double checking the measurements against the clients just to make sure. And as always in Clo, trust your patterning skills, double check the measurements on your patterns because this process isn't perfect, although it is very helpful. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions in the comments.